Say, my mind, my mind has, superpowers. has superpowers. My mind, my mind has, superpowers. has superpowers. Yeah, so my name is Hazik Ali, and like he said, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. But uh, if there's any entrepreneurs out there listening, you know that's not as sexy as it sounds in your Instagram bio. You know, I was making so much money at one point that they put us on 60 Minutes before I was a teenager. Uh, but nobody told me what to do with the money. And so when some perfect storms happen later on in my life, I'm not even talking about getting kicked out of college because I ain't care about that, you know, because I was like, I'm a hustler, baby, you know. And, and then after all, all the millionaires get kicked out of school. I was like, I'm on my way. <laughs> so that wasn't even a perfect storm. But then like a couple years later, all hell started breaking loose. I went through an incredible divorce. Um, I say incredible because, you know, we're friends now. It was incredible, you know. And, and then on top of that, my pops passed away just as we were beginning to build a relationship. And then, um, you know, I still had my stores because I'm a hustler, baby, you know. And then my stores got raided, you know. And it was right during the Christmas holiday. And one thing your kids don't want to hear is, oh, we just going to celebrate Kwanzaa this year, you know. <laughs> or, 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 well, Christmas is a pagan holiday, you know. <laughs> It was just horrible, man. Right around then is when I discovered personal development. Even, even the way that I became homeless was crazy because um, my homeboy had broke up with his wife at the same time, and uh, we were supposed to be in this together. Like, we ain't got to take this, you know. And, um, you know, he ended up getting back with his wife. So then his roommate moves in, and he was a terrorist. I call him Osama bin drinking, you know. He, he, he'll come home, you know, one of them angry drunks and stuff, and, and he'll be like, you know, why don't you just get a job, you know? So at any rate, it was just going bad, so I just decided to live in my car. And um, just when I was about to kind of like give up, um, take this last money that I had made, get an apartment, get a job, I read this book by this incredible man named Les Brown called It Ain't Over Till You Win, you know? And... Um, that book rebirthed my love for personal development. That book changed everything for me because um, at that point, I just decided that, you know what? If anybody can do it, everybody can do it. Somebody say, my mind, my mind has, superpowers. has superpowers. Everybody stand up real quick. Everybody stand up real quick. I want to show you something. OK, so everybody look at your wrist, and you're going to see one line underneath your wrist, and you're going to see another line just like that under the other one. Everybody see that? OK. Now I want you to line them up. And then you're going to see one of your hands is longer. Everybody see that? OK, hold the shorter hand in the air. OK, now put the hand in front of your face. And I want you to repeat eight times. We got to do this together, and you got to say it with energy. Eight times we're going to do grow longer. All right, repeat after me. Grow longer, grow longer, grow longer, grow longer. Grow longer. Grow longer, grow longer, grow longer, grow longer. All right, everybody line them back up. All right, show of hands, who watched that thing transform, right? All right, so that's wild because what that proves is that you can use words, you can use the power of intention to change physical matter. That's the good news. Everybody can sit down. The bad news, uh, fellas, <laughs> is that so far the research has shown it only works on your hand. But I thought that that's an incredible way to kind of explain to you that there's all this information that we aren't privy to. Your mind has six different faculties, will, intuition, perception, reason, imagination, memory. And what I'm here to explain to you is that self-esteem is the hub in this will that we call success. Self-esteem is what determines the level of success you'll expect as well as the level of success you'll accept. The first C of this thing that we call self-esteem is called clarity. What's the word, everybody? Clarity. See, uh, I want to tell you about a guy named Cliff Young. Cliff Young shows up to this race. It's a long distance race, the kind that they have in Australia. He's 61 years old. Everybody else around him is 25, 30 years old. They're wearing Adidas, they're wearing Pumas. This cat shows up in construction boots. I'm from DC, so I get that. 
But he even put galoshes over his so he looked like Kanye West before Kanye West, right? The whole thing is that when everybody else took off, because they asked him in the beginning, they said, well, what made you choose this race? Have you ever done a long-distance race? And he said, well, no, but I'm a farmer, and sometimes our cattle will get lost, and I have to chase them two or three days. I never seem to get tired, so you know what? I think I can do it. And they said, well, wouldn't you want to start with a shorter race? And he was like, well, I looked at it, but this was the only race that was available during my schedule when I had free time and there was a race going on. And so he chooses this 11-day race, right? So what's crazy is that once the starting pistol goes off, everybody else just takes off. And he starts doing this little... It's so famous now that they call it the Cliff Young Shuffle. But Cliff Young had an advantage. See, he had never talked to an elite distance runner. He had never read Runner's World magazine. He had never discussed this with anybody else so that they can impart their thoughts into him. And so he didn't know that you're supposed to, in one of these week-long races, run 18 hours and sleep for six. Run 18 hours and then sleep for six. And he was running so slow that when he got to where all the other runners were laid out in the sleep, he just kept on running. Nobody told him he was supposed to stop. So he runs and he runs. He ends up beating the world record by a full 12 hours. His name is Cliff Young. Now, what's amazing about this story? What's amazing about this story is that usually it ain't what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you know that just ain't so. You know, they attribute this to Mark Twain. And um, you know nobody can prove he said it or wrote this? I think that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the second C is coachability. Now, coachability is one of those weird, kind of like anti-intuitive kind of things because we all believe that we want to learn something and therefore we think we're coachable. If you look at the idea of coachability, though, what you see is that there's an index involved. Coachability is this amazing thing where when you look at people who uh, have succeeded in life, like Michael Jordan was uh, arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, but he was in the league 10 years before he won a ring. That's when Phil Jackson came along. Or you look at Kobe Bryant. He went straight from high school to the NBA. Never won a ring without Phil Jackson. So if these people have Michael Jordan-level talent and they have a coach, What's wrong with me and you? But I'm still just talking about coaching. Even after you find a coach, you still need what we call coachability, the ability to allow yourself to be coached. But coachability is an index. What that means is it's a multiplication problem. It's important you know this because your brain, even though it keeps your heart pumping, even though it keeps your blood flowing to all your extremities, even though it reminds you to blink, your brain has major flaws. One of the flaws is that we can't calculate odds, right? That's why we play the lottery. You know, we don't realize it's a sucker's bet. Another thing that your brain can't do is your brain can't measure future reward, right? That's why we stay up all night watching TV, because the pain of being tired tomorrow is way off in the distance. That's why we have the donut instead of the salad, because the pain of the body we don't like seems way off in the distance. Everybody with me? Future values always look smaller in the distance. This is why coachability is important, because something may be 100% benefit, and you see it as being only 10% or 5% because our brains don't do well with time. Would you prefer $10 now or $12 three months from now? Now, if we look at it logically, we say, oh wow, $2 more in 90 days, so that means it's coming quarterly, so that's like an 80% return. That's insane. Nobody gives you an 80% return. Heck yeah, I'm gonna take it. But who in here knows almost nobody's gonna wait 90 days to get their money? Who here knows that even when they win the lottery, they say, give me mine now. Is that a fact? Matter of fact, this is how the brain works to the point that we all spend our money instead of saving it. We all ignore the future version of ourselves and how much we'll need to take care of him or her. See, that's why a coach is important. Because the way coachability works is that you can't see yourself. You can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. 
So therefore, what is this index I'm talking about? Coachability is a multiplication problem. What coachability means is you are willing to learn times willing to change when you see the need for it. So if I'm a 10, I'm willing to learn. I really want to learn this new language. I really want to learn this new hobby. I really want to get good at this new skill. But my game is on. That means I'm a 10 unwilling to learn, but I'm only a 2 unwilling to change, which means that my score is still only 20 out of a possible 100. Somebody say, wow. wow. That's coachability, and that's why most people fail. You've got to participate in your own rescue. Even procrastination is a prayer for more pain. Even procrastination is a prayer. It's just that it's a prayer for more pain. So I pride myself on my coachability. That book that I read um, that saved my life was written by a guy who's now my mentor. Um, he wrote the foreword to my own book, which is called Take It Easy. You know, that leads me to the third C of self-esteem development, which is all about conditioning. Because after you get a coach, after you figure out exactly what pieces of the combination lock you were missing, because my mentor, one thing that he said to me to change my life, well, he was like, it doesn't matter if you're black or white. It doesn't matter if you're young or old. If you figure out the combination to the lock, it has the open. Most of us are just missing a few numbers. But after you figure out the skill set that you were missing, after you figure out the piece of the puzzle that you needed, now it's just about repetitions. Mastery is always just a number of repetitions along the way. What you have to understand is that repetitions lead to pattern recognition. When you see an architect who can build the building quicker than everybody else, he sees patterns. When you hear somebody that can write a song better than everybody else, it's just they see patterns you aren't privy to. Intelligence is really just pattern recognition. And that's why conditioning is so amazing. I want to tell you guys about a guy named Farrah Gray. Uh, he grew up in the south side of Chicago, the Cabrini Green Projects. Um, but here's what's interesting about Farrah Gray. By age six, he started his first business, right? Um, small business. He was just painting rocks, selling them as paperweights. But he made $50 his first day. And that was as much as his mama made cleaning houses. By age 11, he had three different companies doing things like picking up groceries, you know, by 12, he opened up the Urban Neighborhood Economic Council, or Unique, and he would bring in speakers like me to come in and like teach the kids good business practices, et cetera, and so forth. Around this time, he also reads Deepak Chopra's Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. He's 12 now, and one of them is the law of least effort, which basically says the thing that you love to do that you can do really easy, and you can't imagine how anybody would ever pay you for it, that's what you should focus on. He says, man, I love kids, I love food. He decided to create a food company for kids. By 16, he sells the company for over a million dollars and drops out of high school. But here's what's wild that nobody knows about this. When he was six years old, three different family members gave him a copy of the movie The Golden Child. He decided that he was special. He was conditioned and programmed to believe that he was the golden child. And then the rest was history. Now, is that everything to do with his success? Well, of course not, but it ain't nothing. And what I need you to understand is that let's just say that you don't have a mama like his. You know, even with my own mom, my sister just decided she wanted to be a doctor really, really early in life. So my mom pulls her out of a Muslim school, puts her into this school called Sidwell Friends, and next thing you know, because there's no way we should have been able to afford Sidwell Friends, I grew up in what you would call hell. There's no way that she should be able to afford a school where the Clintons go and all of this. But today, my sister's graduated from an Ivy League school. She's now a pediatrician. That kind of makes my mama like Harriet Tubman, right? But what if your mama wasn't like mine? What if your mama wasn't like Kanye West? What if your mama wasn't like Jay-Z? What if your mama wasn't like Drake's? What do you do? You better start saying your affirmations. The idea about affirmations is that it's any statement that declares you've already got something you want. But the problem is, it's also any statement where you declare you've already got something you don't want. Affirmations are powerful. So every year for the past six, seven years, I've been doing a free affirmation call where people call in wherever I am in the world. Thousands of people listen to these calls every morning. It's all because I think that people think affirmations are a joke. And I wanted to be able to document in real time how my life was transforming. And it's been crazy. 
And that brings me to the last C of self-esteem development. That is contribution. What's the word, y'all? Contribution. Uh, I'll tell you about a guy named Ken Baring. Um, he talks about how he went through four different stages in life really quickly. Um, his first stage was stuff. You know, um, he started selling cars when he was 19. By 21, he'd opened up his own car dealership. By 27, he was a real estate developer. Then he moved into the second phase because he still wasn't happy. So he said, man, I must need better stuff. So he moved into phase two, bigger plane, bigger home, bigger yacht. He still wasn't happy. So then he said, well, man, maybe I'm just collecting the wrong stuff. So then he moves into what he called the phase different stuff. So now that's when he bought the Seattle Seahawks. Still wasn't happy. So then a buddy of his calls and says, man, we're headed out to Bosnia. We're going to go out there and give out wheelchairs because wheelchairs give them mobility. Wheelchairs give them freedom. And, you know, all these children who are either malformed or maybe got their leg blown off by a landmine, we're going to go out there and give them the wheelchair. So he hops on the plane, flies over there. You know, they get off the plane. They start handing out wheelchairs. He picks up the first little kid. He's like 11, you know, really light, puts him in a wheelchair. And um, when he turns away to go grab another wheelchair, the kid won't let go of him. So he turns back, and the kid says, please, mister. And, you know, through the translator, he's like, I just want to stare at your face so I can memorize it again. So when we get to heaven and I see you, I can thank you one more time. And so he starts crying uncontrollably. And he says that this was the first time he ever felt really pure joy, you know. Because of that moment, he started what he called the Wheelchair Foundation. You know, to this point, they've given away probably like a million wheelchairs in something like 150 plus countries. And he said up until the day he died that he'd never been happier in his life. Listen, you got to serve before you deserve. Listen to me. Once you become valuable, you become powerful. Listen to me. The most selfish thing that you can do for yourself is serve somebody else. And um, if there's anything that's responsible for me going from that on the left where I grew up to that on the right where I live now. It's these four C's of self-esteem development. I love you all. And remember, either your mind has to expand to match your goals, or your goals will just start to shrink to match your mind. Thanks a lot.